Hey everybody, and welcome to the next chapter, Five Step Process for Data Exploration. So I wanted to take some time and make sure that I explained a very good uh, and repeatable process for doing data exploration within a Jupyter Notebook. So this is something uh, that I believe is very valuable for those who are beginning. Um, it is very easy to make a complete mess of the Jupyter Notebooks and not have a you know repeatable way of doing a data analysis or working through a problem. So this five-step process uh, should help standardize yourself, at least in the beginning, to uh, build a workflow uh, that is very uh, you know c conducive for verifying results and to ensuring good quality. So here are these um, here are the five steps right here. Uh, one little note uh, before we begin is that, yes, the, the primary reason for developing is this is that um, beginners tend to write way too many lines of code in a single cell of a Jupyter Notebook. So when you write a lot of lines of code in a single cell, you lose the ability to verify your results, to track what variables are what, and to actually visually see what is going on. So... Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and, and talk about the five steps. Number one is write and execute a single line of code to explore your data. Step two, verify that this line of code works by inspecting the output. Step three is assign the result to a variable. Step four is within the same cell in a second line, output the head of the data frame or series. And then step five is you continue to the next cell. You do not add any more lines of code to that cell. So this is actually something that I uh, follow myself. It helps maintain my own sanity. It helps keep my notebooks clean uh, and uh, helps me understand and helps me, uh, you know, error check and, uh, you know, uh, verify results. So uh, yes, I do in fact apply this to every part of the analysis and I suggest you do something similar or at least build your own workflow. So here's mine. Um, Let's go ahead and, uh, yes, uh, import pandas here. So um, even when we're doing something as simple as, you know, reading in data, we can apply this to. So I'll show you the five-step process, uh, just, uh, you know, how it is whenever you're reading in uh, data. So step one is you write a single line of code. So here I'm just going to read in uh, the, uh, just some data frame, say the bikes data frame. All right, so that is step one. And I'm gonna show you the steps sort of independently. So that's step one, we just, uh, uh, we just do one line of code to explore our data. Step two is we verify that code works. We inspect the output. So we make sure that oh, we actually do have the bikes data frame and it looks correct. Now, obviously we're not going to be able to verify everything 100%, but we want a manual verification. We wanna look at this data, make sure that it is in fact uh, you know, reasonable and what we expect. Okay, so that is step two. You just verify that it works. Step three is that you will assign this uh, result to a variable, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and make an assignment statement right here. Um, so I verify that our results, I uh, assign it to a variable. Step four now, so we have this so you have to uh, think of this as all in one single line. So um, this is still, uh, would just all be in one line. I, you know, you're not gonna be repeating everything like this. Um, it all happens in one line, but just for the tutorial's purpose, I have to break it up. All right, so within the same cell, in a second line, you know, I'll put the head of the data frame or series. So typically, the uh, end result of your line of code is gonna be a data frame or a series. So we just wanna see the head of this. We don't wanna see uh, all of it. Okay, and let me copy and paste this like I've been doing. And then step five is you simply stop there and you move on to the next cell. Okay, so that is the five step process. You write one line of code, you verify it, you assign it to a variable, you output the head, and then you move on to the next cell. So that is it and that is a simple process and it should keep, um, it, it should make it uh, much easier for you to track things. Uh, let's see another example, something a, maybe slightly, uh, just a slightly more complex. So 
So let's take uh, this bikes data frame again. Let's say we want to, um, you know, we want to assign the index to the trip uh, as the trip ID column. So right now it just has a default range index, but we'd like to be uh, do slightly better than that and assign it as the, uh, the this trip ID column. So I'm going to use the set index as my one command here, and I'm going to use trip ID. Make sure I spell it right. Okay, there's an underscore. Okay, so this is step one is we write one line of code. So this time I'm not gonna uh, copy and paste this in different lines. I'm simply going to do it as I would in real life. Uh, step two is you verify. So I'm gonna look at this. I'm gonna look and verify that, okay, look, it looks like trip ID is now in the index. So that looks correct. Uh, step, uh, step three is to make an assignment statement. So here I could assign it to the same variable or I could just, uh, you know, uh, maybe I'll just call it bikes ID or something like this. So that is step three is you make an assignment statement. Step four is that you output the head of the data frame uh, just like this. And then step five is simply you move on to the next section. So that uh, that completes it for this example. So it's just that simple. And the reason I want to do this over and over and over again is that every time you do something to your data frame, you're going to want to, you know, verify. You want to visually inspect it. Data exploration is is, is heavily weighted in, uh, you know, doing a visual inspection, manually inspecting what's going on. That inspection verifies that what you've done is correct, and it and it helps you know what to do in the next step. So, um, you know, some people will just like set the index to something like this, and then they, you know, they won't output the head. Uh, I always like outputting the head so I can see the results of, you know, my data analysis progress from one step to another. So, you know, it's like I'm telling a story. I'm making one modification at a time to my data frame. And then I can, uh, you know, once it's over or once I haven't seen in a while, I can easily go back through and see every transformation, every step along the way. I can re-verify. I can visualize. I can see what's going on and uh, understand my logic a lot easier. Okay, so uh, uh, so that's uh, that's with setting an index. Now, um, so this is I don't want you to think that you have to use one line of code and just do the head. So there's obvious situations where you can write multiple lines of code, and you know this is sort of just uh, there to give you suggestions, give you a framework for thinking about how to progress through a data analysis. So for instance, here's a very simple example of where we might want to. Um, you know, just uh, use multiple lines of code instead of just one. So, uh, and this is a very trivial example. So say we just want to select the start time and stop time columns. And I have not talked about subset selection that is uh, coming up very shortly. So the way you do this is by making a list and putting it inside of the brackets like this. So this is how you select uh, two columns uh, like this. You use a list. So if I just do, I can call this bikes times. So step one was just uh, what I did, write, write this line of code. So this is like my main line of code here to do the data exploration. Step two, I can verify that I did, did indeed select that. Step three is the assignment. And then step four will be outputting the head. And then step five will be moving on to the next cell down here. So I did those five steps very fast. Um, and it's not just one line of code, so I use an additional line of code to, you know, create a list. So obviously, you know, this doesn't have to be in its own cell. Um, now, one other thing about, uh, you know, uh, having multiple lines of code in one cell. So I, I, I suggest this when you're first doing an analysis. Now, after you've sort of comprehended your data, you know, and you're uh, insured, uh, you know, uh, you verified your results uh, on, on all your steps, you can then combine many cells together. Um, and, uh, you know, at that point, um, you can feel a lot more confident in combining many cells together, but especially when you're first starting out with the data analysis, I would definitely recommend, uh, you know, separating out your logic into one major line of pandas code and then outputting the head of that, um, you know, of that. So sometimes you're not going to want to assign to a variable. So you don't always have to assign things to a variable. You might just want to look at something. So you might have just wanted to say, uh, look at, uh, 
uh, you know, take a look at these two columns just by themselves for whatever reason. So you don't have to have an assignment statement. Um, also, when you're making an assignment statement, sometimes, uh, uh, let's go back over here. Yeah, when to create a new uh, new variable name. So we have this bikes uh, data set. So I said, uh, you know, you might want to overwrite the bikes name like this, and this will save you some memory because it will, uh, it will, uh, you won't, we won't be creating something new in memory. Um, and uh, it's essentially the same thing. So, so, you know, if you feel confident like this, that this code will work, and you don't need any traceability, then you can just overwrite the line, uh, the, the, the original variable name. Now, um, for beginners, I don't suggest doing this. So let me just go ahead and, uh, and run this line of code. For beginners, I don't suggest doing this because now you've overwritten this variable name, so you don't have any traceability, so you can't uh, access this anymore. Um, so what's good about creating a new variable name for every assignment statement is that you can go back and uh, inspect that one particular variable where it is. So if there's a bug in your code or you want to inspect your data frame at that like point of time, then you can do that. So it's like a little bit of a version control sort of where you can just hop back wherever you were in the analysis and sort of go from there. So that is one reason I like to create new variable names, especially when you're uh, first proceeding through analysis and not overriding it like this. So I don't uh, suggest doing this, although you know it's certainly possible. And the benefit is that you won't, uh, you know, you you won't uh, you'll save a little bit of memory by 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 using the same variable name. All right. Um, yeah. So the very last thing I wanted to say is that uh, you know, regardless of your your where your status of a, as uh, you know progressing as a data analysis, an analysis, um, you should always be uh, verifying your results. So I do this constantly. It's very very easy to make a mistake uh, doing a data analysis. Even very simple things, uh, you know, very simple calculations are uh, in trivial things can be surprisingly difficult. Uh, and or surprisingly easily to make a mistake. So I'm uh, myself. I'm constantly uh, verifying results. So I, I, I also suggest doing that too. So that's the five-step process uh, that I suggest for data exploration. Write and execute a single line of code to explore your data. Verify that this line of code works by inspecting the output. Assign the result to a variable, and within the same cell uh, in a second line, output the head of a data frame or series, and then lastly, continue to the next cell. Do not add more lines of code. All right, uh, hope you found this valuable, and we'll move on to the next chapter now.